How's it going everyone? You join us here at the Happy Yak Ranch with Blaze and with David and we're talking about Powder Keg which is his 1992 Chevy 3500 that he just got almost done with, right? I'm getting close. I still have a few more things yet to do. Needs an alignment and it needs a new windshield because that one's cracked. Yeah, big crack, which is typical for Colorado, but there's a bunch of new parts on them, so let's yeah. check them out. And okay. the, the first thing is that you're pretty much done with your paint. You went through, not only repainted it, but also wet sand and buffed it. How was that process? Well, let's just say that I'm still an apprentice at this and I'm learning how to do it. So a black truck was probably the worst one to start off with, with my, you know, testing my skills on my paint work. But I will say that I learned a lot in the process and I'm not ashamed to tell you where I messed up and where I went right. So today we'll talk a little bit about that. Well, yeah, and honestly, it, it overall, it looks really good. Like you said, black is a difficult color to get perfect because you can just see any imperfections. I know one of the things that you mentioned was that a little bit of the orange peel, which is typical to get off the gun before you wet sand and buff, that some of that was kind of hard to get out of these body lines. Yeah, it's really hard to sand. It's easier to sand, but harder to buff in those without taking the paint all the way down to the primer. So that was a challenge. I did take some of the paint off and some of the body lines. I wet sanded a little too much. And so I have some gray primer showing through. Uh, but I mean, I'm proud of it. Let's just say I didn't let perfect get in the way of good enough. Exactly. And it's, it's a, a truck. It's it, a it doesn't truck. have to be exact, right. you know? Yeah. Again, it's not like we're taking any of these to Pebble Beach. Right. Uh, something else that I really like a lot on this truck is this 454 logo that you put in place of the 4x4 logo that would have come on here stock. Yeah, and that came with a whole set of stickers uh, that had the 454 SS emblems with them. Right. So I used just a couple things. I cut the SS off of the 454, and then in the back, it had the, the orange Chevy emblem with Chevrolet written out and so I just used the Chevy just orange, the bow tie the bow tie in the back yep and I like that a lot and actually your tailgate looks really nice I know you mentioned this was a little bit easier on the paint side because you had it off of the truck which made it a little bit on my workbench where yeah. I could really buff it hard that uh, the paint I got it's a Napa paint that I got and it got really hard afterward. And I waited like two or three weeks before I wet sanded it. So it was difficult to buff it to what I wanted, but I did better on the tailgate than I did anywhere else, except for like right here where you can see, I actually it went, through a little went bit on right the edge. through it with my buffing pad. So yeah. that's, I call that patina. We're trying to make the truck look like a work truck. Exactly, you have to keep some of the character of it because if it was perfect, then we wouldn't be able to drive it on. <laughs> right. Which I we're actually gonna do in a minute here. Yeah, we wouldn't want to take it out and run over yak turds with it. <laughs> now, I also love the way that this bumper is turned out. Not only did you go through and refinish it because it was very rusty, you also threw a new seven pin on here and then you made this hitch set up a lot better and it looks great. Have you tried your seven pin yet? I haven't yet. We need to try it out and see, see if it works. But I did, I did cut these holes bigger so that you could get your chain right here on either side. Right. Um, this quarter inch plate material seems like it's plenty sturdy to handle the chains. And then of course I put this bar on here mainly just so that without the step uh, in the typical bumper. It's really difficult to try and get up in here. You know, it's a really high step. So, so I put that there so you could at least do this a lot easier. Make it a little bit more functional. Yeah. And I also love in terms of function with this bumper that you can put your recovery gear in here. I think this is really the most unique part of this whole truck is this awesome bumper. And it was full of rust and crud. And so it took me a while to get it all cleaned up, but I do think it's a cool feature. I also love that you've got fresh taillights, you've got fresh headlights and a fresh grill on here, which helps make the entire truck look a lot newer. But I know you want to change up the wheels and we have a little example up here of how the wheels are going to end up. So this is an old set of tires. So you're getting a new pair of tires, yep, but new tires. you did a little work to these steelies. So I wire brushed the old set of wheels that I had off another Chevy truck, same year and I painted them flat black on the inside and then this hammered black on the outside. 
and yeah. I think that'll be a pretty nice look after yeah. it's all said and done. I like the way that this texture kind of contrasts with the very smooth, shiny trim that goes on the outside of it. When this is all installed and it's got a fresh tire with a little bit more aggressive tread, it's going to be a good look. Yeah, we don't want to have a homemade paint job with, you know, $2,000 wheels. That yeah. ain't that much, so <laughs> this fits my paint job. <laughs> now, I'm interested to see there's some things that you did on the interior which are really unique, and it involves this fabric. Yeah, let's go take a look at the inside. So last time we talked about whether or not I was going to use the bench seat or use those buckets. And I haven't quite decided yet, so in the meantime I just put a, a cover on the bench. I cleaned the bench all off real good. But I did put a different kind of headlighter in. A little different than what we talked about last time. Yeah, so I know that fabric that you were showing on the last video with this truck, you mentioned it didn't really want to stick, which makes sense because it was kind of an odd material. Right. But this is similar to what you have on the headliner of your blue GMC with the Cummins in it. Yeah, it's a Paisley uh, fabric that I got at the local fabric store. This is headliner material. And, you know, what I've learned when you do things yourself, you learn a lot of things, but this material stretches in, in, in all directions, whereas this doesn't have much stretch at all. Right. And what happens is on the contours for your visors is you end up having a few wrinkles that you just can't get out. Yeah. So you kind of have to live with a few little wrinkles here and there when you use something that's a little bit out of the ordinary. But I do like the way that it turned out. Uh, it's kind of like I told my wife, Julie, I said, yeah, it's kind of like a cowboy riding his horse wearing a tuxedo. Yeah. <laughs> just dresses it up a little bit, you know. Oh, and it makes it stand out a lot, especially on the interior, because otherwise the interior on this truck is very basic. But it is simple and it's rugged, and I love the layout. The dash is very cool, very 80s with all the square buttons. But it's nice because you've got a vinyl floor, so it's really easy to clean out. And surprisingly, you actually haven't had to do that much with this interior overall. No, it was just a good cleaning, because if you remember, it just had mud and crap all over it. It was pretty bad. Yeah. You also did some things under the hood, right? I have. So the, the main reason I felt like powder keg was an appropriate name for a case is that there's still a few things I don't know about this engine. Uh, I've replaced, I bought new air filter, oil filter, fuel filter, oxygen sensor, spark plugs, spark plug wires, uh, a whole new distributor assembly. Right. Uh, that made a big difference in how smooth it ran. Um, I still have a high idle that I'm trying to figure out and a little bit of vibration that I have. And I don't know if that's just because it's so far out of alignment right now. Uh, some things I've done with the front is I've also replaced the A arm, the upper arms that had new bushings and new ball joints. And then I went through the painstaking job of drilling out the rivets on the lower ball joints and putting new lower ball joints in. It took me about, it's the first one I've ever done, so it took me about a day per side. Yeah, that independent front end sounds like a little bit of a nightmare to work on, but I will admit, when you're actually driving this, especially with those new bushings, new ball joints over a bumpy set of road, it's nice, it rides very smooth it does right it feels especially for tight. a 3500 yeah and i put new shocks on it while i was doing it all so does the engine run a good bit better after all of the parts that you installed on it yeah the biggest part was that uh, distributor assembly it had a lot of play in it and so when the rotor when the rotor spinning around it was actually making contact with the points on the cap uh, so when i put a new assembly in it ran much better okay well, I'm glad it made a difference because uh, it looks like you've single-handedly increased AC Delco stock with all the parts <laughs> that you did. bought. I did. So I, I did a little bit of a tally on how much I've spent so far. You know, we bought it for about $2,500 uh, and I probably put another, I'm pushing about 2,200 right now. Okay, so this is probably about a $5,000 truck. Yeah. Uh, call it, call it a, a round estimate. Right. And I'm hoping that there's just nothing hidden in there that's gonna really surprise me once I get it uh, on the road again. Cause I really haven't driven it much more than five or six miles on the road since we bought it. We will be finding out today how this truck does now that it's all put together, minus the tires. In another video, we're putting this truck against Tommy's favorite vehicle in the world, which is the Chevy 1500 that we bought 
for our To Hell and Back series that's going on on TFL Truck. And it's also going up against my 1994 Dodge Ram. So we'll see how it performs. Yeah, I have my expectations. Because, you know, I have a Cummins too. I know how Cummins run. I think I'll beat you off the line, but then you'll just take off at about 40 miles an hour, you'll leave me. Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll have to find out. So now that you're about four or $5,000 into the truck and nearing the end, uh, what do you think you're gonna do with it? Well, I still have some bugs to work out on it. Like I said, it, it's a powder keg. Uh, I gotta figure out the vibration, where right. that's coming from. Um, make sure it drives straight. So I'll be anxious to get it on the road and put you know a thousand miles on it and see what I think of it. Make sure all the bugs are worked out. Maybe I'll sell it. Maybe I'll keep it. Maybe we'll put a camper on it and make it into an outdoor rig and sell it on uh, on a on your bid channel. Yeah. Well, <laughs> my vote is that you keep it because I want to see this around and it's a cool hot rod of a truck, especially in black. You know, like like Tommy always mentions, we got to paint your tow hooks red. Otherwise, okay. we won't be able to use them. <laughs> uh, but that, getting the wheels and the tires set up, you know, It'll in look alignment, brand new yeah, once we're it's going to be an awesome truck. Yeah. And if you want to see how it actually performs against a couple other trucks of similar vintage, be sure to stay tuned because that video is coming very soon.